today's video we will be doing an update to our project pen series this is episode two yes <laughs> so first episode i did it four months ago and i showcased to you guys what i have in my rolling uh, project pen and stuff like that what are the items but the only reason why i said i would give you an update one month one and a half months uh honestly I didn't know it was gonna be this difficult because you know I would say I'm a beauty makeup review channel kind of thing so if you haven't subscribed subscribe down below it was rather hard for me to actually consistently wear the project pen stuff because I had to test other stuff as well which most of the time are like three day wear test two day wear test so at least I could get a solid uh, feel of the new products that I have learned to do a dedicated review on but I have some good progress so far and I do have some mixed feeling for certain products so yeah first episode card up above you guys can go and check it out uh, i do have a playlist just to keep myself in check <laughs> oh my voice break and without further ado let's get into today's video let's start off with base makeup first and we have the maybelline family man and paulus 120 i bought this in like 2019 i know a little bit gross uh 120 this is how it looks like really small baby sample size great for travel surprisingly i did not bring this for travel uh only because this is more of a neutral tone but it's leaning slightly a bit more pink so for me tonally it's correct but for the shade wise it's not really that accurate and then i have light seeker 2.5 from back this is the Dewing Tint Illuminator. So I wanted to use uh, these two in combination together. And basically for this, this used to be like half feel. I know it's really hard to tell. Uh, but I feel that it's somewhere around here right now. So I did use this consistently when I first started off my project pen. But because I was testing out certain foundations, cushion foundations. And I prefer those cushion foundations a little bit more. Um, this was a bit like meh to me and the fact that I had to combine it together with a dewing uh, illuminator which gave up a super pretty finish to be honest. I am somewhere I feel around here for the dewing illuminator right now. I really should take a pen and marker to mark it out. Hold on, this is a very like rough guesstimate but it's somewhere here. And for the Becca Dewing Tint, for the Becca Dewing Tint is somewhere around here. So I do like the Matte and Paula's alone by itself. It's just that I need a bit of that yellow tintness to it, which is the Becca Dewing Tint. So when I combine these two together, they give off a wearable shade for me at least, but it adds more dewiness, which sometimes um, dewy products I find personally in Singapore's heat and humidity, it, is, it does not last. You know, we're in the heat and you just walked in the sun for like 10 minutes your makeup is gonna melt off immediately. Compared to tinted moisturizers, this essentially has zero coverage at all. It does offer that beautiful, dewy, skin-like look. Uh, but personally for me, in order to achieve that kind of look, i rather wear like a matte foundation. And then after that, I'll take like a Max Fix Plus and then I'll just spritz my face and I did it today. And look how dewy and juicy my skin looks like. I think for the Maybelline one, I should be able to finish this really really soon. For the Becca Light Shifter, I'll be honest, I am very conflicted. Uh, part of me does not really want to use this anymore or actually continue using this. So we'll see how it goes. I'll give you updates in the next project pen. Still on the topic of base product, the next one I have with me is actually one of my favorites that I've purchased twice. I've went through twice of this. And now uh, this is the Eclipse Blur Powder Pack in number 23. So this is how it looks like and it's the puff and this is how much I have gone through. So as you can see, that is is a significant dent in it but not enough dent to actually see the base of the metal compact itself you know uh, i do bring this out for touch-ups this powder is great for toning down foundations that are too bright or light for me because it has this very nice healthy yellow undertone which actually surprisingly right now right i feel like my skin uh, at least for my face, it has kind of lightened up a little bit because I have been using vitamin C consistently right now in the daytime. So I feel like my skin tone is a little bit lighter than this 
Uh, of course, I'm wearing foundation right now. But this applies really well on the face. I use this more of a finishing powder because I feel that the powder here is very loosely pressed. When I go in just alone with this in the Singapore heat itself, it does not hold up. It will eventually need some touch up as well. So how I've been using this product is that I will use my foundation and then I will use a translucent setting powder on a brush, set my whole face. And then afterwards, I will go in with this powder again and then I will add it to the certain areas that I will like some added uh, coverage as well. The next product I have with me, also a base product, it is from Kaleidos Makeup. This is the Contour Charisma Palette and I'm in the shade Warm Medium. And guys, let me show you. We have our first baby pen. Yay! So I have panned the bronzer itself and I would say the only reason why I was able to pan this is because this, surprisingly enough, is my only bronzer in my extensive makeup collection. I feel that this bronzer on my yellow agent skin tone works super well. So normally I would go in with this uh, BH cosmetic brush. So it's an angled brush like this and I will go in and I'll just you know work it around the jawline and the hairline and the jaw itself. My main goal for this trio was to actually pan the bronzer itself because I really really do love the bronzer and it really helps to give that additional warmth to my face. I never knew that bronzer could be such a game changer in my makeup routine. I have been doing makeup since like what 2016. This is my only bronzer so far. So yeah, I'm really excited to try out other bronzers as well but nothing really hits the same as this because this is supposedly on the Kaleidos website, it was on an Asian uh, model that had this yellow undertone as well and it, I resonated with that really well. So I think this is what works out for me the best for now. I know I should like dip my feet into other bronzers as well. So if you guys have any bronzer favourites, you know, let me know as well. Drop it down in the comments below. I would love to hear some suggestions. For the brightening powder and the contour powder, I have been using the contour more compared to the brightening. Just for the fact that the contour is just easy since it's here, right? I'm able to just contour my nose since I'm already doing bronzer and everything else. For the brightening powder, I felt that I didn't really see a difference in my makeup. So normally what I'll go in is with this kind of smaller brushes. Because like I said, the pan on this is really, really small. So I will go in like this. Oh, I, I can't invert the angle myself. And then I'll knock off excess and then I'll just go in and do my, my under eyes and stuff like that. Didn't really see a difference for me personally. So honestly, the home run for this is just the bronzer itself. The pan is so big and so generous. So of course, I'm reaching for this. You can see in the center here, there's a bit more of a dead in the contour itself. The next product is now for the cheeks. Technically, the Charisma Contour is for the cheeks as well. But uh, this is highlighter and it's from our beloved brand Colourpop. I have not bought from Colourpop in a very, very long time to be honest uh, but this is still works really well and it's the super shock cheek highlighter in lunch money this is how it looks like the pen was already there it was significantly smaller in the past but now it is slightly bigger uh, only because that this has this very beautiful reflex and the only reason why I don't reach out for this more is because that I have other highlighters that I do like a little bit more than this. So I just hope that I'll be able to get a bigger pen of this soon. I don't think I'll be able to clear this pen anytime soon to be very honest. But maybe if I put my mind and soul to it, maybe. This highlighter still works relatively well for me. I mean, let me just swatch it for you guys. It still have that reflectiveness. It hasn't broken me out. None of the products have ever broken me out so far. So yeah, look at that. It still offers this very beautiful reflex. I have it on my cheeks today as I was doing my makeup today. I was like, ooh, let me go reach out for it, I guess. So yeah. So some progress with the Super Shock Lunch Money Highlighter, but not a lot, I guess. And the next category is eyes, and this is the eyeshadow palette that everyone just was going head over heels for, and it's the 3CE Overtake palette. You guys have probably seen this, you've been in the beauty community for a while, you know that this was super popular, like back in 2016, 2017, 2018 even. So this is my, my progress is like, and honestly, this has not much progress only because for the first like month or so when I was using this palette, I was like, oh my god, yes, everything, you know, looks great and everything. But 
the more I used it, the more I felt like, wow, these colours don't have that saturation on my eyes anymore. They don't pop or they don't look so beautiful anymore. Don't get me wrong, I think the glitter, the shimmerier shades like this one and this one over here, still very beautiful, still absolutely stunning. But the rest, like the matte and the mattes with shimmers and everything, maybe it's also the colour, the colour scheme as well. I'm not really sure, but... It just doesn't hit the same for me anymore and I part of me feels a little bit disappointed. The looks that I did with this are very grey. For some reason, I'm not really sure why. But even if I went in with the brighter, um, this brick red, for example, to maybe uh, do my outer V for some shading, the colour scheme looked really outdated for me somehow. Maybe it's because I knew that I was using this Overtake palette, but basically... I just wasn't feeling it anymore, unfortunately. So, we'll see how it goes for progress. Obviously, no pen at all in this. This shade over here, we're super close. There's a serious dent in it. Uh, but yeah, maybe in the next two months or so, I have no clue. Totally fallen out of love with this palette, unfortunately. Let me know, what do you guys think about my progress? Do you think I should crystal grind it a little bit more, you know, put in some effort, you know, or should I just crystal just, just get rid of it <laughs> at this point? Uh, I love to hear from you guys and thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Do remember to hit the like, subscribe down below, also to ring the bell. Bell keeps you notified on when I upload. I usually upload on Fridays, so you can keep a lookout for that as well. And I will see you guys in my next video. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye!